Hi, this is Decentered Media, conversations about community-focused communications for positive social change. Hello, Rob Watson here for Decentered Media, and this is just an update about this week's community media discussion, uh, which is taking place as ever on Thursday from 6pm via Zoom. If you want to take part in our conversation, we have a regular meetup every week. Uh, go over to patreon.com slash decenteredmedia and you can subscribe there and you'll get the, the link to the Zoom uh, as well as a link to the Decentered Media Forum and any other kind of stuff that I uh, send out uh, in, in advance or on top of the things that I already do via the Decentered Media website which is decentered.co.uk. <clears throat> so this week what I want to talk about or we we you know think it'd be useful to discuss is uh we've had the news this week that the bbc is um what's the, the right word to use here i suppose emasculating bbc local radio a further emasculating bbc uh, local radio and it's consolidating uh program production network output and it's reducing the amount of original local uh, programming that's done on a daily basis. So, f- it, you know, from s- <clears throat> I think it's the the morning breakfast programs up to two p.m. are going to be from uh, one of the. This is in England, one of the thirty nine stations that broadcasts as a BBC local radio station. Uh, but from the afternoon, they will be uh, regionalised. So Leicester is going to be combined with Northampton. Uh, I think Liverpool is going to be com- combined with Manchester. Um, and then <clears throat> at certain times in later on in the day, it'll be further consolidated, whereby, you know, Lancashire, Liverpool, Manchester will be combined into one regional uh, programme. And Leicester will be combined with Nottingham and Derby and other places. Uh, the details are on. Uh, the website and some links to the news articles uh, that uh, broke this yesterday. And I think, you know, there's a couple of questions that we need to ask, which maybe aren't being asked. You know, we've seen this huge celebration of 100 years of the BBC, this kind of self-congratulatory outburst. But uh, I, I'm kind of a, a bit more sceptical about the future of the BBC because I think there's a few uh essential elements that are missing one of which is part citizens participation and engagement who was asked about this where's the evidence that uh people who live in leicester or liverpool or manchester or wherever coventry oxford cambridge all the places that are affected by this in england where's the evidence that anybody this was discussed with anybody where's the uh, where's the evidence of demand um and there's a there's a kind of problem that these things become a self fulfilling prophecy if we're not careful. So it's people lose interest in local radio because we're not investing in it. It gets run down. So then it gives people the opportunity. It's like you know, think of your local library. Um, you know, you stop investing in it. You stop buying new books for it. You don't decorate it as often as you should. Uh, you don't update the computers. So people stop going. And then they say, oh, well, people aren't coming, so we can't spend as much money on it. And then eventually it reaches the point where somebody says, well, you know what? Nobody really uses the library, but you know, why don't we just sell it off and somebody can turn it into a fast food restaurant or something, or somebody can you know, turn it into a, a, a carpet warehouse showroom. And you kind of end up in this situation where it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy because what you're not doing is investing in local voices and people having a direct say to talk about the things that matter to them. So I think there's a connection here between what we discuss with the role of the BBC in terms of providing a universal service, but also local services, (coughs) excuse me, and also the key commitments that community radio is defined by. So it's almost as if community radio is going to have to pick up some of the slack here without the resources or without the planning and without the political support that it should have, uh, which the BBC has as a national broadcaster, which is clearly defined and legislated for and institutionally organised. Community radio 
has the role of uh, providing services for local communities by those local communities, but it's not very easy to get support for in, you know, consistent investment that ensures that those services are playing the essential role. So community radio stations are licensed to service a specific place, so they have a limited geographic spread and a specific community. And the four key commitments are for community radio to <clears throat> let's get this up actually because uh, I think it's uh, <laughs> a bit a bit easier if I'm, I'm more specific about them. I, I did think I'd remember them off the top of my head, um, and I've written this in a in, in a blog which summarises this, um, which is that uh, which is on the website. So which is that? Let's see. Uh, there's four, and I'm in, really indebted to Siobhan Stevenson for this because she summarises it really well. Um, and it's the first, it's the promotion of broad sound broadcasting services to individuals who are otherwise un, underserved by broadcast media services, more generally. Second, it's the provision of education and training services uh, so that people can make and run their own media platforms and services. And third, the strengthening of better understanding of communities and the, the links that people have within them. And finally, uh, to facilitate discussion and the expression of opinion. Now, I know uh, that people in Liverpool uh, and people in Manchester really don't care that much about each other. The experiences are different. The, but, you know, the, 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 there's, there's, there's things that are similar. We we get buses, we're held up in traffic jams, our shops are the, you know largely the same. But I'm not sure that people want a homogenised service that just blandly talks about everything as if it's the same. Uh, what does somebody who lives in Leicester know about Northampton? What does somebody who lives in Northampton know about Leicester uh, or Nottingham? And these things are important. They matter. And what's re I find really kind of confounding is it kind of goes against the levelling up agenda. If that's to mean anything at all, autonomous local decision making, building on cultural and social and economic capital in areas that have lacked investment or opportunity uh, over decades. And it's, you know, the levelling up process doesn't include or doesn't explicitly address the role that media might play. And when I was at the, I, I gave evidence to the House of Lords Committee on the future of the BBC uh, earlier in the year. And, you know, it's th this lack of connection between levelling up and media, I think is a huge, huge uh, error. It's a mistake. And it would be interesting that if any of our politicians from the governing party or the opposition parties take look at this and take this up and say, no, our media needs to be given a social role, a, a social purpose to address civic dysfunction, to address uh, democracy issues, to address human rights, to address climate change, to address inequality, to address educational attainment levels, uh, economic opportunities. The, the, it, it seems as if we just passively let our media become this homogenized uh centralized uh, uh corporate product that is is you know kind of n no use to to anybody in in practice but i mean it, it, the commercial media uh, companies are very, very sophisticated at branding themselves and, you know, kind of formatting programs and uh, bringing in celebrities to uh, to present them. And, and you know, that's that's on, a, on an international level when you're competing against Spotify and Instagram and Facebook and Google, you know, that, that might be one of the challenges that you've got to do in the attention economy. <clears throat> But there isn't a grounding for local media. And I think one of the crucial things about community radio is that it serves a very distinct purpose. The people we work with in community radio often would never want to or be able to walk to the BBC or a commercial uh, media company, knock on their door and say, I would like to take part in a discussion and they'd say, well, we don't do that. You know, we have producers and presenters 
that provide these things for you. And so you're left out in the cold. You know, you've got nowhere to go. And so community radio has that obligation and uh, duty to uh, bring people into the process of making our own media so that we have got somewhere where we can say we would like to do programs that are of interest to us using the skills and capacities that we have and not being dictated to by uh, distant producers and bureaucrats and civil servants who are, you know, m many, many miles away from our neighbourhoods and our the lived experience that we have. <clears throat> and so a kind of democratic reversal of what's needed to ensure that we have a, a strong, independent, democratic, pluralistic media process. Again, it's taken a further knock and nobody seems to be standing up against... Um, you know, it, it, the, the danger is for community radio is that uh, if if some voices are heard over and above others, is that things like the key commitments that define community radio will be watered down. And we've already seen this happening with the introduction of the small scale DAB, the, what's called the CDSP license, the community digital licenses that go on the DAB platforms, where the change has been from significant social gain to some social gain and okay it introduces more flexibility and, and hopefully allows more people to come in and have a go but are we really giving up this you know uh, precious resource of uh, people's attention in order to just you know I don't know be a notice board rather than really getting in and building people's capacities and really empowering people to uh, speak and hold uh, our leaders and ourselves to account and be responsible about you know there's we live in a world of misinformation how are we going to counter that if we don't have the, the the faculty the capacity the skills the infrastructure to do that on the basis that we are uh, we've learned through practice and that we're educated about the demands of 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 responsible and um accountable media well if we don't invest in community media and we let it the the, the you know if we weaken what community media is supposed to do because it's difficult and it is difficult but if we weaken that well we you know we'll just pack it up and 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 we'll just leave everything to the big tech corporations to facilitate and you know we'll have no way of being able to counter the misinformation the bias uh, the control, the profiteering uh, that they have. And remember, you know, kind of these uh, corporate global corporations are run from California. Then there's nowhere in Leicester that I could walk to to knock on the door and say, hey, Google, I don't like how your algorithm works on YouTube. Um, you know, so so where do we where do we want this to go? And I think there's some real questions that we need to be asking and difficult conversations that we need to be having and we need to be clear about this and we need to draw uh, our politicians and our leaders into these debates and discussions because otherwise we're just gonna it's just gonna get waved through and yeah very convenient you know, the corporate big commercial conglomerates are very convincing they've got a lot of marketing power behind them they can they can put forward a very convincing argument uh, but if somebody wants to make their own programs and share them with their own communities uh, in their own neighbourhoods, uh, that should be something that we, you know, it's like setting up a shop. You know, we shouldn't have to go and ask Tesco and Sainsbury's for permission. Uh, and they shouldn't engage in pr uh, practices which um, uh, you know, stack the economic opportunities against us because they've got, um, you know, kind of prior... Uh, uh, you know, size, if you like, which 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 skews the pitch. Um, <clears throat> you know, we should be able to operate independently and create a dynamic market economy and a social market economy based on the principles of you know we're guaranteed certain space within the marketplace in order to be able to develop our ideas uh, and not be crowded out by big large corporations who consolidate and and, and uh, homogenise everything. So there's a real challenge here. Uh, you might 
Uh, I'm a little bit more animated about this than I thought it would be. Uh, but I think it's really important that if we don't protect and we don't identify with and come together in order to fight for those principles of uh, inclusion, participation, training, uh, democracy, our human rights as citizens or civil rights as citizens, then we we will lose this without, you know, any kind of a fight and any kind of a pushback against the kind of bland corporatization of our media. And okay, you know, community media might not be slick and professional, but that's kind of the point. And you know, the more we invest in it, the more people appreciate it and the better and this is the opportunity that community media has to have a stronger footing in communities and to really help build uh, social capacity within our communities. Anyway, lots for us to discuss. Um, I'm sure there'll be plenty of other points of views that people want to put forward and I'd be happy to uh, 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 hear them and to think about where these things might go in the future. So if you want to get involved uh, a couple of ways, go to decentered.co.uk or go to patreon.com slash decentered media i it's about two pound fifty a month to sign up uh and it's you know i'm, I'm not putting uh, uh blowing my own trumpet but you know if you really do want to counter some of the, the 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 control that some of the large corporations have go and support your independent media organizations uh find your local community radio station your local community media group and give it some you know Buy a coffee or the equivalent of a coffee once a month because it makes a big difference. If you want to get in touch with me, I'm on Twitter and Instagram at Decentered Media. Uh, but otherwise, I'll speak to you soon and hopefully we'll have a really good conversation on Thursday. Visit decentered.co.uk or follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Decentered Media.